Now, starting today, every child in their first year at secondary school in the UK will be given one of these. Mm. And no doubt a million parents will have no idea what on earth they're looking at here on the television, so we'll show you this. Worth billions and generating well over a million jobs, Britain's technology industry is booming. And to keep it that way, we need our children to grow up fluent in coding, the language of computer programming. And it's hoped that by giving one million Year 7 children a free BBC Microbit, that's one of these, a handheld portable computer, that coding will become second nature to them. Well, I'm here at Fallabroom Academy to get a sneak preview. Software engineer David Whale is leading today's session. What do we hope to achieve by kids having access to these? Instead of children being consumers of technology, we want them to, to invent the future, basically. So you have an idea and you write a little piece of code for it and then you can make the idea come to life. It may have taken the BBC and 31 industry partners years to develop, but pupils here are already happily writing code for their microbits and finding new uses for them. OK, guys, so what are you doing? We made like a magic eight ball. Uh, wow. Okay. We ask it a question that either says yes, no, maybe. Can you show me? OK. Is the one show a good show? <gasps> Maybe. <laughs> I think there's something wrong with your computer here. And while it might be small, it has big potential, as three of our new coders are about to find out. Here at the Jodrell Bank Observatory in Cheshire, Professor of Astrophysics Tim O'Brien has a special challenge for them. This is one of the world's biggest telescopes. Uh, it weighs 3,200 tonnes and we'll get you to use this to drive that around, to move that telescope. If they succeed, the telescope won't just move, it'll pick up a signal from a pulsar, a rotating star 26,000 light years away. Helped by our expert, David Whale, they'll each code a microbit attached to a model telescope. As we turn and tilt the model, this is gonna move the real telescope. Working as a team, Joe will be coding the tilt, Amar the rotation, while Millie will measure the pulsar signal. Well, we've made it so when it gets a signal, it shows an animation of a star and it beeps. With their microbits programmed, it's time to put their coding to the test. So I'm turning it so it's facing where the pulsar is. So I'm going to tilt it so it's pointing next to the right of the light. And now I'm going to press the button or send the coordinates out to the telescope. It's moving. It's moving. It's moving. It's it's moving. moving. I can see the numbers changing here. Yeah, Is it weird to see it turning because of, because of what you've done here? Yeah, because what? it's only like a tiny model. I know. I don't expect I know. To work that. So yeah. it's turned. It's turned into the right position. What's going to happen next? It's in the right general direction, Yeah. but we need it to lock in on the pulsar, so I'm going to press the button for it. To You're going to do that now? Yep. Good luck! Oh. Oh. And that beeping means they've done it. One, two, three. 